This is ChestertonRadio.com. Talking Tales. You are about to hear the first episode of The Last of the Mohicans in the further adventures of that famous woodsman, pioneer, and scout, Natty Bumpo, whom you have previously met as the central figure of that thrilling story, The Deer Slayer. We now meet him under the name of Hawkeye. The production is written and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. of our drama is laid in the dark recesses of that section which lay between the headwaters of the Hudson and the adjacent lakes. The period is the time of the colonial wars of North America, when the yells of savages mingled with every fitful gust of wind from the interminable forest. The present episode opens just after sunrise one summer morning before the stout defense of Fort Edward. The quiet air is broken by a bugle call and is answered by scurrying feet and the confusion of voices. Officers shout guarded commands. Fifteen hundred men fall into line and to the muffled drum beat begin their trek into the woods on their way to succor Fort William Henry, which is weakly garrisoned and has sent for help against an impending attack by the French General Montcalm. General Webb is standing at the door of his quarters, talking with a young officer, Major Hayward, and a young woman, Cora Monroe. Cora is the daughter of the general commanding Fort William Henry. She has been visiting at Fort Edward and is now trying to join her father before Montcalm begins his attack. Major Hayward, a close friend of the family, has been sent to act as her personal guide and protector. General Webb is speaking. Thank God they're on their way at last. It's generous of you, General Webb. Fifteen hundred reinforcements will bring fresh courage to Fort William Henry. We're in a tight fix, Major Hayward. Montcalm is ready to strike at any moment. And my scouts report he outnumbers us two to one. More than that, sir. He has every renegade Iroquois he can muster. I know. Unless these stout logs can hold them off. This forest may see another massacre. When do you leave? At once. Miss Monroe here wants to get to William Henry, where she will be with her father if trouble develops. Miss Monroe, your visit here has been very pleasant. I'm sorry that this unexpected advance of the French should cause you inconvenience. Oh, I'm not alarmed, General Webb. Only I do regret to cut short your very pleasant hospitality. Then I know Father will want me with him. Naturally. Are you following the main column, Hayward? Uh, no, sir. That runner you see yonder by the big oak is taking us by a shortcut. We should arrive several hours before the detachment. Oh, Duncan, surely not that hideous creature. How can you trust such a savage at a time like this? I know him, my dear, or you may be sure I would not trust you to his keeping. Uh, what tribe, Hayward? He's said to be a Canadian, General, but has served with our friends, the Mohawks. How did he come among us? I don't know exactly, but it was by some strange incident in which your father was interested, and in which the savage was harshly dealt with. If he has been my father's enemy, I like him still less. Why must we take a secret trail anyway? Why not journey with the truth? Because the enemy spies know we are sending this detachment to your father's help, and they know the route they'll take. There may be fighting on the way. Therefore, for your sake, the secret trail known to this guide will be safer. Major Hayward is right, Miss Monroe. There are many engines faithful to our cause. And if Duncan knows this, Rana, you need have no fear. Duncan, something tells me you're taking the wrong course. I don't like his looks. There's something evil about him. I'll answer for his conduct. If necessary, these pistols will persuade him to keep his word. Very well. Goodbye, General Webb. You've been very kind to me. Goodbye, Miss Monroe. Goodbye, Hayward. God go with you.
Duncan. I'm worried. How long did the guide say this journey would take us? He promised to reach the fort by early afternoon. And it's almost night now. Could we be off the trail? Not likely, though I confess I'm disappointed. There's something I wanted to tell you the last hour. We've been hurrying so fast I haven't had a chance. Yes? Just as we came out of that dark gully back there, I happened to look over my shoulder. And I know I saw a painted Indian peering from the bushes. Are you sure? Right. He vanished just as our eyes met, but I know he was spying on us. And such an evil face. Mm, it froze my blood. Oh, you're nervous, Cora. Your overall imagination probably conjured up this vision. I'm sure we're being spied on, I tell you. Duncan, I, I feel a strange spell on us. I felt it ever since we left General Webb this morning. Speak to the guide, won't you? Ask him if he knows where we are. I mustn't let him think we are distrustful. But I will inquire. Magua! Magua! Stop a moment. The lady is tired and wants to rest. Uh, How far are we from the lake, Magua? Many miles. Many miles? You said we would arrive by two o'clock. It's almost night now. Trail slow. Are you sure you're on the right trail? Right trail. Then why has it taken us so long? We are not prepared to spend the night in the woods. How much longer will it take? Uh, oh, come. You speak better English than that. Tell me if anything is wrong. Duncan, look. Look, there's the trees on that log. They're Indians. It led us into an ambush. Where? There. There to the right. I see. Yes, they are Indians. Oh, but there's a white man with them. Come ahead with me. Magua, stay here. Oh, who comes? Friends to the law and the king. Up your arms. Can you tell us the distance to a fault of the crown called William Henry? We've been traveling since sunrise without food. I fear we're lost. Oh, William Henry? Why, oh, you're entirely off the scent, man. If you're a friend of the king and have business with the king, you'd better to follow the river down to Fort Edward and lay the matter of Fort General Webb. Why, it was Fort Edward we left this morning. This lady you see with me here is the daughter of General Monroe, commander at Fort William Henry. She's on her way to join her father. We left Webb's camp this morning with a special guide whom we trusted to take us to our objective by a secret path. But it begins to look as if we have been deceived. In plain words, we don't know where we are. Who is your guide? An Indian who came to the fort and volunteered to serve in such capacity. Ah, uh, strange an Indian should be lost in the woods when the sun is scorching the treetops and the water courses are full and the moth on every beach can tell him in which quarter the North Star will shine at night. Is he a Mohawk? Not by faith, but adopted in that tribe. I think his birthplace is farther north. He's one of those you call a Huron. A Huron? And you trust him? I wonder that you haven't fallen in with more of his blood taken kind. He's a Mohawk now, I tell you, and claims to serve with our forces as a friend. And I tell you, a Mingo will die a Mingo. Enough. I know about this guide. I'm not willing yet to believe he's treacherous. He's a stranger to you, and you shouldn't judge him. But you haven't answered my question. What is our distance from the main army of Edward? Uh, that depends on who's your guide. One would think that such a horse as yours might get over a good deal of ground atwixt sunup and sundown. I have no time for idle words with you, friend. If you tell me the distance to Fort Edward and conduct us there, you'll be rewarded. And in so doing, how do I know that I don't guide an enemy and a spy of Montcalm to the works of the army? I speak English. <laughs> Not everyone who can speak the English tongue is an honest subject. Are you a scout for the king's forces? You speak true. Then you should know such a regiment of the king as the 60th? The 60th? You can tell me little of the Royal Americans that I don't know. Though I do wear a hunting shirt instead of a scarlet jacket. Then you may know the name of its major. Its major? If there's a man in the country who knows Major Effingham, he stands a you. The gentleman you name is the senior officer overall. I speak of the junior officer. He who commands the companies in garrison at William Henry. I've heard that a young man of vast riches from one of the southern provinces has the place. And he's said to be a soldier and a gallant gentleman. Whether he be all of that or not, he is speaking to you now. I am no enemy, except my word for that. I heard a party was to leave the encampment this morning for the lake shore. You heard the truth. But I preferred a nearer route, and I trusted to the Indian I mentioned to lead us. Uh, he deceived you, huh? And deserted. Neither. At least not the latter, for he's just up the trailer way, waiting for us. I should like to look at the creature. If it's a true Iroquois, I can tell him by his knavish look and his paint. You wait here till I return. Uh, these Indians by me are Mohican friends. This is Chingakook, and this is his son, Uncas. You have heard this conversation, Mohicans. 
Do you think it likely I've been deceived? Hawkeye, we're safe. Who is this white friend you call Hawkeye? Great scout, guide. I shorten. Finger lightning. Do you know about this war between the French and the English? Shingaku, no. And what is his side? English friend. And you? Hawkeye friend. You're on enemy. You're on enemy, eh? You will find enough business for your scouting knives pretty soon. Montcalm has the entire Iroquois tribe at his back. Mm. Hawkeye, come. Just as I thought, Major, you've been tricked. I knew it as soon as I laid eyes on the apartment. The thief is leaning against a sugar sapling just beyond that first oak. I am tempted to take him between the ankle and the knee and put an end to his tramping through the woods for a month or so. No, it will not do. He may be innocent. Yes, if I was sure of his treachery... Then I give you another plan, Major. You go back and hold the imp and talk. These Mohicans will steal up and take him without breaking his paint. No. If you're right, I'll seize him myself. What can you do mounted against an Indian in the bushes? I will dismount. When he saw one of your feet out of the stirrups, he wouldn't wait for the other to be free. Then I will talk openly with the miscreant and pretend he's my truest friend. Very good. Don't show any suspicions yet. The Delawares and I will watch from here. Magua, do you know where we are? Here it is almost night. You've had us on the trail all day, and we seem as far away from William Henry as we were this morning. Tell me the truth. Are we lost? Real long. But you said this morning that you could reach the fort by noon, or a little later. Real long. Pale face woman go slow. I want the truth, Magua. If you are not sure about the path, then I shall engage a white hunter we have met. He says he is acquainted with every nook of these woods. He'll face hunter alone? Alone? Why, um, no. During our suit, he will go. He'll face will see none but his own color. Leave it not subtil, sly fox. Whom do you call the sly fox? Magua, Lurina Subtil. Name given Magua by Canada Fathers. Magua, you told me you promised the chief of William Henry to guide his daughter through these woods. What will Renard say to the hot-blooded Scotsman if you desert us now? The Renard will not hear him in wood. But what will the Mohawks say if you prove a traitor? They will make you petticoats and make you stay in the wigwam with the women. Oh, but come now, Magua. Why should we quarrel? Let us rest here for a moment. Open your wallet and eat. When the lady is refreshed, we'll proceed. Mm, pale faces make themselves dogs to women. What say you, Renard? No uh, so deal say it good. But we must not delay too long. Montcalm may even now be in our path. Well, what's the matter, Renard? Did you hear something? Renard hear nothing. Then why did you start so? Oh, but go on with your meal. We must hurry. Renard no eat. Is your corn dry? Maybe I can find something among my own provisions you would like. Let me dismount. <laughs> Magua, stop! Stay with the girl, Baker. We'll take him. After the farmer, Douglas, after him! to hear another episode of The Last of the Mohicans, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsay.
It is the period of the French and Indian Wars in colonial North America. Montcalm is moving up the Champlain. General Monroe, commander of Fort William Henry, has sent an urgent request to General Webb, commander of the armies of the king at Fort Edward, for reinforcements. And the latter has dispatched 1,500 troops to his aid. General Monroe has also sent one of his officers, Major Hayward, to act as escort for his daughter, Cora, who has been visiting at Fort Edward. Hayward decides that it would be safer not to follow the detachment, owing to the danger of an imminent attack, and engages an Indian guide to take them by a secret trail through the forest. This guide, however, proves to be a treacherous Iroquois and loses them in the woods. It is late in the afternoon, and Major Hayward has become alarmed. He encounters a white hunter named Hawkeye, who is accompanied by two Mohican Indians. Hayward tells them of their predicament, and Hawkeye, after looking at the guide, says he is an enemy Iroquois. At that moment, the guide breaks away. There is a flash of a rifle, and Hawkeye shouts, After him, Uncas! Why are you coming back, Hawkeye? The scoundrel must be concealed somewhere in these trees. We just had a cloud to chase the wind. But we're not safe while he goes at large. Did you hit him, do you think? It was a quick sight. But look at the sumac. If leaves are red, that answers your question. How? Everybody knows the fruit of the sumac is yellow in July. The blood of the sly fox. You did hit him. Let's follow. He may fall yet. Oh, I only rubbed the bark. Just enough to make the creature leap a little faster. But we are five able bodies to one wounded man. The devil would only draw you to the tomahawks of his friends. We've got the Mingos on our trail now, Major. And if we don't hurry to throw them off, our scalps will be drying in front of Montcalm's marquee again this hour tomorrow. I am hot-blooded. I forgot my charge. Come, let me present you. Cora! Oh, here I am, Lincoln. I have bad news for you. The guide we engaged to find us a shortcut through the woods was an Iroquois. I'm convinced he got us lost on purpose and now has deserted us. Oh, I suspected him from the first. I told you so this morning before we started, but you only laughed at me. This may explain the face you saw from the bushes. What was that? Just after noon, we passed through a particularly dense thicket, and Cora thought she saw a painted face staring from the undergrowth. Major Hayward thinks it was my fancy. It was no spirit you saw, gal, but a flesh and blood red skin. And my guess is that your late guide knew he was there. Cora, let me introduce this hunter, whom luck has thrown across our path. His name is Hawkeye. And this is the daughter of General Monroe, commander at Fort William Henry. She is trying to reach her father before the war begins. Cora, this man is our sole protector now. We are in your hands, Hawkeye. If you will see us safely to William Henry, you can name your own reward. Uh, save your offer of money. Neither of us is likely to live long enough to profit by it. Duncan, are you sure about these Indians with this guide? Why, of course. They are Mohican friends, Cora. Have no fear, gal. These Mohicans will guard you with their lives. Is it possible to reach the fort tonight? I could show you the way to William Henry by a secret path I know, but... Oh, uh, then let us start at once. Uh, it's impossible with the lady in the party. Oh, I am tired, but I can ride a few more miles. I say it's impossible now. I wouldn't attempt it for the best rifle in the colony. Oh, we're not afraid. We'll you follow? Uh, that runner who just deserted you knows the path as well as I do. And his mongrel Mohawks might overtake us before we could get half a mile. Then we're in your hands. What is your plan? These Mohicans and I will do the best we can to give you safekeeping. But you must promise two things. Name them. First, you must be as still as these sleeping woods. That's what will happen. Second, you must keep the place we're taking you forever secret. I promise both conditions. Then just now, both of you, and follow. Moments are precious. What shall we do with our horses? Leave them here? Now that would be to tell the Mingos we're close by. We'll have to get rid of them. Oh, don't kill them. We may need them again tomorrow. Ancus, swim the animals down the river to the black hole. That'll throw the redskins off the scent for the present. You and the gal come with me, Major. There's a canoe hid a little way down the stream. I'll soon have you where even Mingo eyes can't pry into our secret. Are you ready? Lead the way, friend. We'll follow. <laughs> Where are we? We're at the foot of Glen's, 
in a cave that will defy Montcalm and all his bombs. Are we quite safe? This cave is in a mass of rocks 50 feet above the water. 50 feet straight down almost. But the siege would trap us in a hole like rats. <laughs> you don't rightly know the plan of this little castle. Such old foxes as Chingakook and me are not often caught in a burrow with one hole. There was a fall in the river about here at one time that cut out these big hollows you see in the rocks. There's more than one way down to the river if we're forced. And this is a kind of island. Exactly. It is an island. But a narrow fort that offers a narrow defense. Why, while an enemy was hunting around for the mouth of this tunnel, one good rifle could stay off a tribal redskin. Well, I hope we won't have to put its strength to the test. Will we stay here all night? Only till the moon goes down. We need dark before we travel again. If you'll make yourselves as comfortable as you can, I'll see if the Mohicans have finished their arms. Duncan, do you think this guide is honest? Something tells me we're in awful danger. We are in danger, Cora. But as to the guide, I have every reason to believe he's our friend. But these horrible creatures with him. He said they were Delawares or Mohicans. They're the same. And if so, they won't harm us. They're well-known friends of the English. No, I hope you're right. But they appear to me like evil monsters. Oh. Wait until you can see them closer and talk with them. You'll change your mind. I hope so. Well, I believe this cave has been occupied before. It's probably a rendezvous well-known to our friends. Let me pile up these sassafras boughs for a couch for you. When Hawkeye returns, we'll have some supper. Oh, why did we ever leave the fort? Father knows we left Edward this morning, and he'll be worried to death. Your father's a soldier and knows how to estimate the chances of the world. Listen, Duncan. There's someone at the mouth of the cave. Stand back. Wait. It's probably Hawkeye. Are you there, Major? It is. Well, everything's just as we arranged it, and Uncas is bringing some fresh venison. I'll make a fire, and we'll soon spread the feast. Is it safe to light a fire? When I get the blanket over the mouth of our retreat, we can have a dozen fine knots and no one will be the wiser. Personally, I'd rather forego the comfort of a fire. Uncas, fix the deer. I'll rake up some pine knots. Oh, What's that? Ugla, Anukla, Donka. Mokla, no. What is it, Hawkeye? We don't know. I have ranged the woods 30 years, and I've never heard his like. Is it a war cry? No. That had an unhuman sound. You'll never mistake a war whoop. Uncas, see if our light shines through the blanket. No, oh, I can't sleep in a place like this with such a cry ringing in my ears. Oh, there it is again. What can it be, Hawkeye? I can't say, girl. Well, it's a warning we can't ignore. It's some new method our enemies have found to terrify us. I believe I know the sound now. It's so muffled here in the cave that I didn't recognize it at first. What? It's the shriek a horse gives when in great agony or terror. It must be a pack of wolves hovering about. That's a bad sign. A wolf is an animal that's likely to hover around an Indian encampment, craving the off balls of the deer. Hungers drop down in a canoe and whirl a brand among them. It's risky, but we can't let them sounds continue. Yeah, well, well. Miss Monroe, uh, this is a good time to get acquainted with Chingakook here. We have been together since I was a boy. Why, he can tell you more things about these woods than any hunter alive. Chingakook? Yes, that's Mohican for Big Serpent. Hmm. So called for his cunning. I've often wondered what passed in these woods before the white man came. Did the red men fight among themselves? Tell her your story, Chief, while I spread the feast. Mm, I'd like to hear it. Have your people always lived here? Girl, where I come from beyond Big River, over Great Plains where Buffalo live. We camp here. Whole country Delaware. Mohican country. Was everything peaceful then? You're on follow. Delaware drive him into wood. Was that before the English came? Long before. Then Delaware happy. Lake give fish. Wood give deer. Oh, he can worship great spirit. Your fathers must have been wise men at the council fire. Delaware's old. Great father of nations. Are you a chief? Blood of chief in Chingakok Vein. How did these Indian wars with the white people begin? Dutch come. Give my people fire water. Steal land. My people driven back. 
a sad story. Where do your people live now? Old God, land of great spirit. Sing the cook alone on top of hill. Soon go down in valley. Uncas follow. Then no more Mohican. Uncas, King of Cook's son, last of Mohican. You may be the last of your tribe, King of Cook. But there'll be plenty of work for you before you strike the last train. Mm. Uncas, come. Was it a wolf pack, boy? Did you scare him? Okay. Hawkeye. Mean we come? Never. The devil, you say. Sergeant, put out the fire. And stay here with the gal. What's wrong? The boy says we have callers. You mean the Iroquois? Crawl with me up on the ledge, Major. You too, Uncas. It appears we haven't given the varmints the slip part at all. They may be here by accident. They may not know our exact location. Can't we leave by one of the other entrances to your cave before it's too late? Your horse has given us away. At least told them we're in the neighborhood. We'll have a look at them first. Where are the Uncas? Igo Rook. Sukamuk. I see, lad. There, beyond the black rocks, Major. The devils have swam over almost to our doors. How many are there? I see four heads behind that driftwood. But there may be a dozen. But are you sure they are bent this way? Sarton. Look to the private of your pistols, Major. Uncas, call your father. We need every rifle. Uh, Cora mustn't be alone. She'll be safe for the present. Crawl down in that fissure on your right. I'll be close by. It's too dark to tell much. I can hardly see. Your eyes aren't used to this kind of fighting. Yes, Jinger Cook. Sergeant. Sergeant. Mm. Take that rock on the left. Mm. Uncas, stay here in front of the cave. Uh, shall we fire first? Wait till I give the word. Each of us must take a man. You take the one on the right, Major. Sergeant, the one on the left. Mm. Leave the others to me and Uncas. Uh, uh, I see them, boy. I see them. I can see them now. They're gathering for a rush or they keep their backs below the logs. Let them. That leading varmint comes to his death. Though it be Montcalm himself. Ready? Make every bullet count. Fire! <laughs> Cover for your lives. The woods is full of the devils. To cover and reload every piece. Pistols went to the bottom of the rocks. Them toy guns are no good anyway. Get that extra rifle there behind the sassafras and go to your post again. Sarpent is out there alone. Stay here, gal, and keep covered. Maybe I should stay with Cora. This place is exposed from too many entrances. No, go with Hawkeye. I'll be close by. We need every rifle. Let them burn their powder. There'll be a fine gathering of lead when it's over. Oh, that bullet was better aimed than common. Can they see us in these rocks, Hawkeye? Their flying eyes are keen, friend. The flash of our guns give them direction enough. Uncas, boy, don't waste the carnals by overcharging. A kick of the rifle. Fire! Fire! Look to her. I see, Sergeant. Look, Major. In the top of that oak. Straight across. There's the sharpshooter. I don't see him. He's hid behind the trunk. But his legs are exposed. He's shooting straight down on us. Keep him in place, Hoppin, till I can bring Kildare to bear. 
We'll try his metal on each side of the tree at once. Ah, he's got our range here, Hawkeye. Yes, and we've got to dislodge him. That shot took my hair almost. Duncan, Duncan, oh, let me. Cora, me. why have you come out here? You risk your life every second. No more risk for me than you. But you can't help. You were safer in the cave. Go back, please. No, I, I feel better here with you. Please. That black cave is horrible. At least I can watch with you. Ready, Chief. Now. Fire. Oh, that for your boldness, Redskin. You got him, Hawkeye. Only wounded him. But he dropped his rifle anyway. He's swinging there from that ragged branch. Oh! Oh, he's fallen with jagged rocks. I'll be merciful. Give him another rifle, Hawkeye, in pity's name. No. His death's certain, and we have no power to spare. But he's a human being. Is his scalp one of ours we can't afford? Oh, he's losing his hold. Quick, friend, don't let the poor devil... Oh, he's falling, Hawkeye. Oh, thank heaven. That was the act of a boy. What mattered it whether he struck the rocks living or dead? It was an act of mercy. Yes, I reckon... But it was a shot wasted, and it was the last charge in my horn. Angus, go down to the canoe and bring up the big horn. It's all the powder we have left, and we'll need every grain of it. Ogla! Do we have enough ammunition? Uh, it's hard to say. These Indian fights sometimes last for days. Isn't there some way we could deceive them? Give them the slip? Uh, not like the gal. Not at prison, at least. Why, they're, they're all around us. Why are they so still now? Or well, maybe they've decided to leave. Uh, you don't rightly know their cunning. I'll wager they're across there planning their next move. Why, oh, a dog doesn't quit when he drives the fox into a hole. That's Uncas. Something's happened. Lie still. The lad's safe enough. Hawkeye! Hawkeye! Bingo! Steel canoe! Look! River! What say you, boy? Come, canoe, gone. Powder, gone. Look. Your canoe gone? Impossible. You hid it so. Look for yourself, Hayward. Now it goes now. But there's no Indian in it. Not in it, Major, but there's one on the other side of it. And he's almost to the rapids. Have you more powder in the cave? Uh, not a grain. Uh, these arms are no better now than so many stalks of mullein. I hate to admit it, friends, but we're on Mingo Marcy now. We'll take to the caves again. We can oppose them from there. <laughs> With what? The arrows of Uncas? Our case may not be so hopeless, Hawkeye. I think our enemies may sicken of the struggle. They don't know we're without arms. Anyway, we may have friends not far away. It may be a minute or an hour before the wily serpent steal on us. But come they will, and in such fashion as to leave us nothing to hope for. But surely you won't just sit here and do nothing? Chingakook, my brother. We have fought our last battle together. The Megwas will triumph in the death of a Mohican chief. Let Mingo women weep over Mingo dead. Great serpent of Mohicans has coiled himself in their wigwams. Yes, and struck your share of the vomits. Eleven Huron warriors lie hid from graves of tribes in snow melt. No one tell where to find Chingakook silent. You've been a bitter foe, Chief. <laughs> and they remember, depend on it. Uncas. Tell coward Mingo Hasten. That uh, is look among fishes for their dead. You're on float with slimy eel. What's this talk, Hawkeye? <laughs> They're just warming their Indian feelings, that's all. They'll soon provoke the Megwas to give them a speedy end, depend on it. But as for me, being white... I shall die as becomes McCullough, with no word of scoffing or bitter. Oh, why die at all? The path is open on every side. Let us no longer involve you in our hapless fortunes. There is no path open to the woods now. Uh, the downstream current might sweep us beyond our rifle flow. Then try the river. Why stay? 
You you say yourself we face certain death here. She counsels well, friend. We have no claim on your life. Maybe you can serve us better by escaping down the river. Why argue the matter? Why? Uh, because it's better for a man to die at peace with himself than to live haunted by an evil conscience. What answer could we give your father when he asked where we left you? Go to him and... And simply say you left me with a message for him to send us aid. How long do you think you can remain here? Oh, I don't know, of course. I may be carried into the woods. But if so, you may be able to overtake me. Jengaku, you hear the young woman? Sarpen here. Good plan. Go, bring soldier. Stay, scalp dry in wigwam. Then go. And I'll follow. It may be for the better. Listen, gal. If you are led in the woods, break the twigs on the bushes as you pass and make the marks of your trail as broad as you can. If mortal eyes can follow them, I'll follow to the ends of the earth. Goodbye, Hawkeye. You've done everything you could for us. Oh, if a powder had held out, this disgrace could never have befallen. Goodbye. Goodbye, Hawkeye. It's a long chance, Cora. But it's the best plan. If aid is possible, that scout will bring it. Uncas, why are you staying? Why don't you follow? Uncas, stay. Oh, no, you must not, do you hear? That, that would be to increase the danger of our capture. Uncas, stay. Fight for white daughter. But you will also endanger our chances of release. No, Uncas, you, you must go. Now listen. Go to my father, General Monroe, at Fort William Henry. Tell him you are my most confidential messenger. Tell him to give you the means to buy my freedom. See? Here. Here, take this ring. Give it to him with my message. Go now, Uncas, quickly. Uh, Uncas, go. Help. Pale face daughter. Duncan, do you think they can swim away without being seen? Quite likely. But we'll soon know. If they're caught, you'll hear the Iroquois boasting about it. I've often heard of your skill in the water, too, Duncan. Won't you please follow them? Is such the faith you expect from me? Oh, but you must consider your own life. I will not kill me, but you... No more. I shall stay you. It's all the fault of that horrid guide who got us lost. It's my fault for trusting him. I'm to blame. No, don't touch yourself. You couldn't know. The sly fox he calls himself if I could get my hands sly on him. Sly fox? I thought you called him Mug. No, oh, that was a part of his treachery. Le Renard Soutil, the sly fox, is his real name. Duncan, he may be at the head of this attack. Do you think he... Quite could... probably. Let's examine the cave more carefully. We may need every nook and corner of it. Help me stack up this brush around the entrance. It may help to hide us. Duncan, what I've discovered. No, that came from above us. They probably found some of their dead comrades. They sound all around us. Yes, and not so far away. Oh, we're lost, Duncan. Not yet. There, that entrance is covered. Let's go the other. There's no time. Lie down here close to the wall. Don't move. They're just outside. I can almost touch them. Leaving Duncan. They've missed us for the present, but they may return. We were only armed. I have my pistol, but it won't help now. If we can just hide for a few hours, Hawkeye may bring help. They know we're here somewhere. And they won't give up searching. Let's try to block up the other entrance before they get back. Be careful, Duncan. They may see you. I must take the chance. Stop. There's someone out there now. I hear him. You're right. Keep quiet. There he is. He's looking straight at us. But he doesn't see us. It's too dark in here. Duncan. Duncan. It's Magua. 
the Sly Fox. <gasps> Cora Monroe and Major Hayward are trying to reach Fort William Henry. Deserted by a treacherous guide named the Sly Fox, they meet a white hunter, Hawkeye, and his two Mohican companions, Chingakook and Uncas. He takes them for the night to a secret cave on an island in the river. But they are discovered by the enemy Iroquois. A sharp fight ensues, in which Hawkeye uses all his powder and realizes they are trapped. And treated by Cora and Duncan, the scout and the Mohicans escape by swimming down the river, promising to bring help as soon as possible. Major Hayward and Cora try to conceal themselves in the cave, but are discovered by the sly fox. They are dragged from their hiding place, surrounded by the whole band of Iroquois. <laughs> Why, you devil, if I'd known this yesterday, I'd have shot you on sight. Very no subtle words. You're well named, Sly Fox, you treacherous dog. But if you harm a hair of our heads, my soldiers will... No fine, Sly Fox. All is big. Not big enough to hide you. They'll ferret you out for... Your face boast. Why have you done this? You came to Fort Edward and claimed to be a friendly Mohawk. I engaged you on an honest errand. I never did you harm. My tongue lie. He'll face fill bushes with enemies. Draw knife first. What do you mean, I fill the bushes with enemies? White heart, black. I did you no violence, I tell you. I promised to reward you if you took us to Fort William Henry as you agreed. Look, Mugwa's shoulder covered with blood. Why shoot tired Indian? You deserted. But I didn't fire the shot. No, the long carabine. You friend, the long carabine. You mean our white friend, Hawkeye? Is he the long carabine? Hawkeye, the long carabine. You are not the first to require to feel the sting of his rifle. Uh, in this here? I, I can't understand them. Interpret, what do they want? You don't want the long carabine. Oh, you want the long rifle. Well, he's escaped. He's gone. He's far away. When white man die, he think to be at peace. Red man know how to torture spirit of white man. Show Magua long rifle body. You're on one scalp. You don't understand. He's not dead. He's escaped. Long rifle, no bird to spread wing. No fish to swim without air. You're on no fool. He's no fish, but he can swim. We burned our powder and the long rifle floated down the stream when your eyes were in a cloud. Why, white chief, stay? Only cowards desert their women. Where is Le Gros Sepin? Who do you mean? Le Gros Sepin, old Mohican. Oh, Jingakook, big serpent. He went down with the water, too. The surf has no here? Your French names bother me. Speak English. Uncle's pounding out. Your French is bad, Magua. Surf is the name for stag. The word for elk is Elan. Mm, pale face have two words for one thing. The young Mohican swam down the river, too. Nothing. Who super? The long caravan. Oh, what are they saying, Duncan? They're disappointed. They want Hawkeye and the Mohicans more than they do us. Oh, they'll take their revenge on you and me. They may. Again, I have an idea they may take us to Montcalm. Why? They could use us as hostages in dealing with your father. Montcalm is a great politician. Why do they want Hawkeye? The long carabine. Hmm. It comes to me now. Why, Cora, it's Hawkeye that's known throughout the colonies as the long rifle. He's the ablest guide and scout in this whole territory. Look, look. Why are they all pointing in that direction? That's the way to Fort Edward. We're not far away, and they know it. If Hawkeye could only get back now. It's too early to expect him. Now, don't worry, my dear. Everything will be all right. Here's my walk. Hell, please come with Huron. Where are you going to take us? Far away. Where are we going, Duncan? Can you tell? Do with. Toward the fort? No. You still think he may be taking us to Montcalm? I'm afraid not. 
It's the wrong way. Look, I'm trying to mark the trail, as Hawkeye said. Be careful. We watched. It may mean death if we're caught. Maybe they can follow the horses. These are not the only horses in the woods. Well, I, I wish I could understand the difference in the Indian names. Huron, Mohawk, Iroquois, Delaware, and Mohican. Why, the Hurons and Iroquois mean the same. So do Mohican and Delaware. Oh? Are they, are they all enemies? No. The Mohawks are friendly. That's the reason I trusted this Magua. He said he'd been adopted in their tribe. What do you think of Chingakook and Uncas now? Oh, I wronged them. I didn't know. I feel a pity for old Chingakook. He's the last of his people. His son Uncas is the last. I wonder if we'll ever see them again. Bill, they talk too much. Be still. Why are you hurrying so fast, Magua? Can't we rest a while? Real long. Yes, it was long yesterday, too, when you got us lost. Where are we going? Far, very far. We've been on the trail for hours, and we're tired, very tired. Let us stop here in this glade. Stop a while. Real long. No time to rest. I want to talk with you. I have something to say fit only for a great chief to hear. Speak. Please have no ears. But these Hurons with you are not deaf. I have words for your ears only. If you won't listen, then the officer of the king knows how to be silent. Mm, Magua, stop. Ogla, talk. We're going to stop a moment, Cora. Dismount and get some rest. I'm going to try flattery with this fox. Tell your men to keep their distance, Magua. What I have to say is for your ears alone. Speak, Magua here. I've been mistaken about you, Magua. The Canada Fathers gave you an honorable name when they called you Lirinard Subtil. Mm. I understand your wisdom now. I shall remember and reward you. You have proved to me that you are a great chief. Mm. You know how to deceive your enemies. What has Renard done? Let me tell you. When you took us on their trail yesterday, you knew that the woods were filled with outlying enemies. You found out that you couldn't get through without being seen. That's why you took us so far off the trail. <laughs> you lost the path to blind the eyes of the Hurons. Well, now you have pretended to betray us in order to make the Iroquois think you are leading us to their camp. And now, having closed their eyes, you have turned like a fox and are taking us to General Monroe. Oh, you are wise, Renard. Mm. You will have a medal made of gold. Your horn will run over with powder. You will have a fine rifle. I will give you... Mm. What will young chief give? I will make the fire water flow before the wigwam of Magua until your heart will be lighter than the feathers of the hummingbird. Mm. White man make long speech. We not have much to say, too. I listen. Magua, born chief among Huron of Lakes. See sun twenty summers before see pale face. Magua happy. Canada fathers come. Give fire water. Make Renard rascal. Huron, huh. drive him away. I've heard that, and I'm sorry for you. But the Mohawks took you in and adopted you? Who gave Renard fire water? Who make him villain? Pale face! Your people! Oh, it was wrong, Magua. I know that. But we're not responsible for that. You take me to the fort now. And, and see how my father will give you every kindness. Magua's story not ended. When English French fathers dig up hatchet, Renard struck war post of Mohegans. Fight against all nation. Who was chief of Mohawk war party? Your father. He say to Mohawks, do this, do that. White chief make law. Indians no can drink fire water. Magua drink fire water. Come.
am in camp of Monroe. What gray beard do, huh? Why, he probably did justice by punishing you. Justice? You call justice to make evil, then punish for it? Oh, Magua tied up before all pale-faced warriors, whipped, whipped like dog, scars on Magua back, ah! marks made by Monroe on back of Huron chief. Let us say your treatment was unjust. If so, show General Monroe that an Indian knows how to forgive an injury by taking his daughter to him. Uh, you're on love good for good and bad for bad. No, oh, enough of this parleying, Duncan. Name your intention, Magua. If reward won't change your heart, then tell us what you propose to do. Uh, are you going to lead us prisoners to the woods? Or do you do you plan some greater evil? Magua will speak. When Magua left his people, wife given to another chief. Now Magua make friend with your arms. Let daughter English chief follow. Live in Magua Wigwam. Magua, you carrion. Oh, what possible pleasure could Magua find in sharing his cabin with a wife he didn't love? Take the golden and row and by the heart of some Huron maiden. When blows scorched back Huron chief, Renard would know where to find woman to feel smart. <sighs> Daughter of Monroe will draw water for Renard. Whole corn, huh? cook venison. Body of gray head Monroe will sleep among cannon. His heart will lie in reach of Renard knife. Oh, you're a monster. Number of fiend could plan such a vengeance. What say, daughter of Monroe? Oh, her head too good to find pillow in Renard Wigwam. She would like it better when it rolls about as plaything for wolves. Oh. Ah, her bosom cannot nurse children of Huron, huh? She will see it spit upon by engines. You treacherous dog, I wring your black heart. Oh, Duncan! Duncan! Get the knife! Hayward, with Hawkeye and the Mohicans, are trapped in a cave by a band of Iroquois. Hawkeye, Tingakukanunkus, escape with the purpose of bringing help. Shortly after, Cora and her escort are discovered and dragged from their hiding place. The triumphant Indians, led by the sly fox, take them prisoners into the forest. Toward evening, Hayward tries to bribe his captor into letting them go. But the Iroquois tells him that Cora must go to his wigwam as a Huron squaw. Infuriated, Hayward engages in a hand-to-hand -hand encounter with the sly fox. The Indian's knife is raised for its fatal plunge. When a rifle flashes from the trees, followed by the yells of Hawkeye, Chingakook, and Uncas, the Indians, taken by surprise, are put to rout. And the two whites find themselves again in the hands of their friend. The present scene opens a short time later at a spring where the little group is gathered about their evening meal. 
My father will certainly reward you for today's work, Hawkeye. Tut, tut, such services have been my life for 30 years, gal. The devils were certainly taken by surprise. Yeah. Four Hurons, gal. Yes, and should be five. If we'd been a little quicker. What do you mean? The sly fox. He rides away from Uncas there before the boy could get a fair grip on his warlock. Oh, then that means we haven't seen the last of him. He'll have another lot of the bloodsuckers at his heels or for another son. I hope I get my hands on that carrion again. You're hot-blooded, Major. It takes cunning to deal with savages. What did you think you could do single-handed against half a dozen of the varmints? I didn't stop to think. Renard's insults maddened me. My act was instinctive. What did the rascal offer you? He was hot with revenge and hate. My father once had him whipped, and he was serving with the Mohawks. He intended to take Cora to the Iroquois camp as his wife. I see. An Indian never forgets, depend on that. I am surprised he didn't take your scalp, though, Major, before he left the island. I thought at first he might be taking me to Montcalm as a hostage. But what I don't understand is how you happened to be at that spot. You started for Fort Edward. We didn't go to the fort. We hid under the bank of the river to watch the movements of the Huron. Then you saw all that passed? Not all. The Indian sight is too keen to be easily cheated, and we kept close. No, Uncas, your behavior was more like that of a curious woman than a warrior on the scent. Yeah. Oh, don't criticize the boy, Hawkeye. He saved my life an hour ago. Oh, it's just like a nightmare. That knife was in my hair when Uncas reached me. You saw our capture then? We heard it. An Indian yell is plain language to men who have passed their days in the woods. They took us away in canoes. How did you follow us? Did you keep us in sight all the time? No, in fact, we lost sight of you entirely until we found you there in the clearing. It's a miracle you found us. When we got down the river away, the band divided and the party that went south had horses too. Uh, we were thrown off the scent. But we took the trail into the forest because we judged they'd be taken into the woods. But when we followed it without finding a single twig broken, my mind misgave me. Especially as all the footprints bore the prints of moccasins. How did you find us then? <laughs> it was the judgment of Uncas here. He had noticed that Miss Monroe's horse planted his legs on one side of the ground at the same time. Now that's contrary to any four-footed animal I ever saw. Except the bear. The caller's horse comes from the shores of Narragansett Bay. Is the merit of the animal. <laughs> it may be. It may be. But I have never seen one travel after such a sidelong gate. Anyway, Ilkus noticed the peculiar tracks, and that's how we found you. There's another thing I don't understand. Did you recapture your ammunition? Uh, we found the canoe a hundred yards down the stream. The powder had been untouched. The sun is almost down, Hawkeye. What are we going to do now? Can we start for Father's garrison? If you can stand two more hours on the trail, I can take you to an old fort where you'll be safer than in these trees. We depend on you. Lead the way. Angus, yeah. scatter the fire. We've got a sharp march ahead of us aboard our Uruguay. teaches many things to a man that makes it his home. Is your lodge much farther, Hawkeye? Only a few rods further, if I'm right. Are you tired, Cora? Dreadfully. Is the fort very far? I think not. Tomorrow you'll be with your father. Ah, here we are, as I thought. Why, it's a kind of a house. Yes, tumbled down somewhat. But it'll make a shelter for the night for you. I should think a place like this would be known by every Indian in the woods. There are few living who know that this blockhouse was ever raised, Major. Angus, yeah. clear out the spring. Sergeant, mm. cut some chestnut shoots for the ladies' bed. Mm. Well, Sit down here on this mound, corner and rest. I want to look around the place. I'll be back in a moment. When was this place built, Hawkeye? Before you was born, gal. Mm. Was it a dwelling? For 40 days and 40 nights. I was a yunker then and went out with the Delawares against the Mohawks. 
We built this place for a barricade. Did you beat them? Uh, not a one of the Mohawks got back to tell the fate of his party. I was young then, as I said, and new to the ways of savages. And I buried the dead with my own hands under this very hillock where you're sitting. Oh, the, this is a grave? <laughs> yes. Yes, but it's no bad seat, though, if it is built out of the bones of mortals. Oh, how gruesome. It's all right, Cora. The place is a wreck, but it'll be a shelter from the prowling beast. Duncan, this mound here is an Indian grave. I was sitting on it. I wish Magua was at the bottom of it. Hawkeye was just telling me of a battle between the Delawares and the Mohawks that was fought here. That's not our concern now. We all need sleep. But I want the privilege of keeping watch. No. No, the eyes of a white man are too blind for such a watch as this, Major. Chingakook will be our sentinel. If any beast or redskin gets within a hundred yards, he'll awaken us. Here, get some rest, both of you. In six hours, we'll move on to William Henry. Guide. 
Even the bark of the trees gives him location. Mm, this silence is terrifying. The path is getting steep. We must be getting into the hills near the lake. Where are we now, Hawkeye? We're not far from William Henry. But it's a weary path yet and full of uncertainty. Do you know this spot very well? I've fought the enemy in these hills from the rising to the setting sun. Do you think Montcalm has moved down on the fort yet? Yes, I do. We may have to crawl through his lines before we can sleep again. Do you want to stop a while, gal? It's been a hard trail for you. No, push on, please. Good. Keep your voices down. They carry fall in this quiet. How many soldiers does Montcalm have, Duncan? We don't know. Probably 20,000. How many under father's command? Oh, just a handful. Oh, isn't resistance useless? We must try to parley with them at least. What will Montcalm do if the garrison surrenders? Oh. Stop. Stop. King the Cook hears something. Give Ah, that's neither Indian nor English. What is it? It's a French sentry. Oh, answer him quickly, Duncan. They have fire. We are cut off, Hawkeye. The French are between us and the fort, and the Indians are behind us. Oh, it's a wrong What can we do? There's only one thing. Get off your horses. We'll send the Mohicans in front, cut a lane through their sentries, and enter the fort over their dead bodies. Je viens de la couverte et je vous me coucher. Sans doux, mon camarade. Tu me prends pour un provincial. Je suis chasseur. J'ai ici avec moi la fille du commandant de la fortification. Je la fais prisonnier près de l'autre fort et je la conduis au général. Bien, adieu, mon ami. Je vous souhaite rien de voir plus agréable à remplir. Bonne nuit, mon camarade. We are safe for the present, Hawkeye. It is well you understood the knave. What did you tell him? I said I was a French officer, that I had captured the daughter of the English general and was taking her to the camp. I had a hard time to restrain the arrow of this young Mohegan here. Yeah. Huh. It's well he believed you. We may not have such good luck with the next one we meet. There must be others. Of course. Why, his presence means that the French have moved down around the port. It's a delicate needle we have to thread in passing them. But is such a course possible? Why, the thing can be done. How? Just as I said. We'll turn the horses loose, send the Mohicans in front, and fight our way through. It won't do. Listen to me, friend. There's too much risk. I'd be willing to take the chance, but Miss Monroe here... That would... would be a bloody path. What's the alternative? We'll turn on our trail, get without the line of the lookouts, and go up into the mountains. So we'll be safe there? I can hide you so that all the devils in Montcalm's pay will be thrown off the scent for a month. Then let it be done. Instantly. every minute. We're beyond them now. Uh, that was a close call an hour ago. You can thank Chingakook for discovering the varlet in time. And also Duncan's knowledge of French. Uh, them foreign words of yours, friend, spared us a lot of trouble. How far have we climbed, Hawkeye? Where are we? Just a few yards more, Major, and your eyes will tell you everything. It's a painful route we've just covered. It's getting light, Duncan. Look, there are the trees just ahead. At sunrise. Oh, I pray that I'll never see another night like this one. Here we are. It's the summit. This flat rock will be a fair vantage point when the sun gets up. You can see the whole valley from here. Uh, get off the horses and straighten out the kinks in you while I speak with the Mohican. Let me help you, Cora. Mm. There. Are you cold? No, I... I... Oh, you are. You're chilled through. Let me fix this blanket for you. We're not staying here very long, surely. We're entirely in Hawkeye's hands. If we do get through this mess... Oh, don't say if. 
course we're going to get through. Oh, forgive me. I'm too much the pessimist. Does that mean that I'm too much the optimist? No, my dear. It's more than optimism. Your courage would shame the bravest regiment of the line. You flatter, Duncan. You know I don't like it. <laughs> Sounds like a council of war. <laughs> Look at Uncle Duncan. He's like a bronze statue. We both owe him our lives. He kept me from falling over the cliff there at the cave, and he reached you yesterday in time to stop Magua's knife. I wish we could show our gratitude in some way. Couldn't you engage him as a runner for the army? Yes, but he probably wouldn't join us. He's too much the nomad. Major, we've decided to give your horses their heads. We can't use them anymore. Turn them loose in the woods? Oh, no, don't, please. I agree. They'll only become food for wolves. They'll have to take the chance. Look for yourself. Do you know the name of that lake down there? The Horicon? Ah, uh, the bloody pond, we call it. Why, there's Fort William Henry. I can see the rampart. All right. And what do you make out there to the south? It's too misty to tell. By the Lord, it's a mass of tents. Yes, the tents of the French. You're looking into the heart of Montcalm's camp. It's like a puzzle picture. I can see it clearly now. They have thrown up batteries. This... They've opened fire. We are a few hours too late, that's all. Montcalm has already filled the woods and the plain with his French and bloody Iroquois. We must try to get through to the fort, Hawkeye. Capture would be better than hiding out and running the peril of roving Indians. Look! That shot made the stones fly from the side of the commandant's house. Ah, those Frenchers will pull it to pieces faster than it was put together. Oh, it makes me sick to be absent from my regiment. Let's go to Montcalm and demand admission. We'll explain the whole story. He's not a barbarian. I know he won't deny a boon to Miss Monroe. You wouldn't reach the tent of the Frenchman with a hair on your head. If we could get one of those boats along the shore, it might be done. They've drawn their lines too tight. Ah, oh, there'll soon be an end to their fire, though. Look. Look at that fog blowing down the lake. That'll be to our advantage. Let us start down. I have my doubts. But if you're equal to the work, we'll make a push. I'm equal to it. Uh, would I had a thousand men who feared death as little as you, gal? I'd soon send them jabbering Frenchies back into their den again. The fog is rolling down fast now. Yes. We'll just have time to meet it on the plane and use it as a cover. Now listen to me. If anything happens to me, Major, keep the air blowing on your left cheek. Or better, follow the Mohicans. They'll scent their way day or night. Sergeant, mm. do you think we can make the fort through that fog? Mm. Dangerous. Sergeant, go first. Uncas, last. Then lead on. We can meet our death only once. How much we owe you. You've been a real friend, and I'll never forget it. Why should you risk your life for us? Uncas, you're an enemy. 
White man, friend. If we do get through all this, will you stay with us? My father will give you a place of honor among the troops. Uncas, last of Mohican, live in forest, warway. Fight your honor. But you're young. Why risk the peril of the woods? Come and live with the English. Forest, Uncas, home. No happy white man wigwam. Chingakook. What did you find, Sovereign? All clear ahead. Pale face. Hmm. Pale face. Ah, uh, the Frenchers have another picket directly in front of us, Major. Can't we make a circuit and get back into our path again when we get past? They are probably strung out in a solid line between us and the fort. Anyway, if we bend off our line of march, we may never find it again in this fog. Oh, you may be right on this. It's a desperate chance. But a fever can't be treated like a toothache. Push on, Major. The, the lad may be right. Stop. What are you going to do? It's small hope. But it's better than nothing. Look. See this furrow? It was made by one of them shots from the fort. We'll follow it. It may serve as a guide. Here, come this way. But hurry. If this fog lifts, we'll be a mark for both armies to shoot at. But what about the sentry that the serpent says is ahead? We'll try to circumvent him. Follow the furrow, Uncas. If this plan works, it'll be a miracle, Duncan. Oh, it's a foolish idea, but we have no choice but to follow. Take my hand. This fog is getting thicker. Can you find the path of the shot? No. I don't think the Indians can either. If we get lost, I'll carry out my plan of surrendering and throwing ourselves on Montcalm's mercy. Watch out for that log, Cora. Oh! Oh! Are you hurt? Ivana! It's a sentry. It's a sentry, I say. Carry the gun, Major, and push on. C'est moi! C'est moi! Ami de la France! Push on and don't stop. Push on, I say, and don't stop. This way, quick. Oh, they're firing blindly. Are you safe, Major? It's hopeless, Hawkeye. Stop. It's a French patrol. You go on. Let me surrender. It only means we'll be taken prisoners of war. No, no, not yet. Let us return their fire. They may think it's a sortie and give way or wait for reinforcements. Serpent. Argus, are you ready? Fire! We've got the whole French army on us, Hawkeye. Lead on for your life and ours. The French army has moved down and laid siege to the English garrison, Fort William Henry. Cora Monroe and her protectors are trying to thread their way through the line of French sentries when they are suddenly caught between a crossfire and threatened with immediate death or capture. At that moment, however, the English attempt to sally against their enemy, and in the fighting, Cora and Major Hayward, who are separated from Hawkeye and the Mohicans, are found by their own troops and conducted safely to the garrison. The present scene opened several days later in the quarters of General Monroe, Cora's father, commander of the English forces at Fort William Henry. The general is facing his narrow room. Come in. You sent for me, sir? Yes, come in. Close the door. I want your advice, Hayward. How long can we hold out? In my judgment, sir, we have reached the end. More than half the guns are useless. What's the feeling among the troops? They are naturally alarmed, sir. Any signs of discontent? I... I regret to say there are, sir. Drop formalities, Duncan. They don't mean much in the face of death. Have you received further news from General Webb at Fort Edward? None. I can't understand why he doesn't dispatch troops to our relief. He is more comfortable on the Hudson. If he would only lead 10,000 of his men against Montcalm, we could... He's hopeless. We're deserted. 
Yet if I thought there was the least hope of success, I'd hold this fortress if I had to fight with pebbles. We've been fortunate to hold off the French for five days. If Montcalm had planted his guns in the hills instead of moving down to the plain, he could have wiped us out. Perhaps. But it wasn't necessary. He has the strength, and he knows it. Well, have you any plans? Yes. I have asked for a truce and arranged a meeting with Montcalm. When? At two o'clock. Where? It is Marquis. That's Cora. Let her in. Father. Father. Hawkeye is coming to the fort with a French officer. What does it mean? That's the answer to our question, General. He was taken prisoner when we were separated in that fog. I'm sorry his usual good luck deserted him. Will they bring him here at once? Yes. Then may I remain to hear his report? Of course. But if he is their prisoner, why should they be sending him to us? He can't be an emissary of the French. No. His loyalty to us is above suspicion. Montcalm is using him as a tool some way. Come in. Hawkeye. Welcome, friend. Your absence has worried us. I have been concerned for you. When we got separated in that fog, I couldn't tell what the outcome was. What about the Mohicans? Did they escape? I can't say, gal. I haven't seen them since. But what happened to you? Why were you brought here by that French officer? Uh, it's a long story. I escaped by hiding in an old log. When the firing stopped, I started down the lake to Fort Edward. Fort Edward? Why didn't you try to get through to us here? The fog was lifting. I didn't dare try the French sentries. I went to Edward to report your condition and bring help. What was Webb's answer? Is he coming to our relief? Speak. Speak, man. The matter is urgent. He said he had sent you 1,500 men and could spare no more. But he is no danger at present. Oh, I made every argument. But he promised nothing. Did he send any word at all? He wrote a long letter. Explaining, he said, why he couldn't move. Let me have it. Let me have it. Oh, it is my disgrace, sir, that the message is in the hands of Montcalm. What? I was trapped two hours from here last night. What did I tell you, Hayward? But why were you set free, friend, and brought here to the fort? I'll answer that, Hayward. French diplomacy. Montcalm has Webb's letter. It makes our plight perfectly clear to him. He sets Long Rifle free to tell us he knows everything in order to hasten our evacuation. Why is your position so bad? The walls are crumbling about our ears. Our men are restless. In fact, I have already arranged to surrender. Major Hayward, Montcalm expects me at his marquee at two o'clock. You will go along. We shall make the best terms possible under the circumstances. by Charles Frederick Lindsley. General Monroe, commander of Fort William Henry, has arranged to surrender to the overwhelming French forces of Montcalm and has promised a safe retreat. The English forces are already on the march when Hawkeye arrives with the news that the Iroquois have broken faith with Montcalm and intend to massacre the entire garrison. But he is too late. Already the woods is filled with war hoops. The bloody scalping knives are at work. And the fiendish massacre of Fort William Henry is written on the pages of American colonial history. The accounts of the number who fell in this unhappy affair vary between 500 and 1,500. It is now the hour of sunset and four men are seen issuing from the trees, advancing slowly toward the smoldering ruins of the fort. Their progress is slow and guarded, as though they dread the renewal of the frightful incidents of that early morning. Hawkeye, are you sure that Cora was not among those who escaped? Positive, Major. We've fallen almost to the Hudson. Then we must search every inch of the ground among those bodies. Can. Look at that carnage. 
The demons of hell couldn't equal this cruelty. I, I followed the trail of blood for years. But I've never seen the hand of the devil so plain as it is here. Mm. What say you, Tinkercook? Shall the Hurons bolster this to their women when the snows come? Mm. I see it in your eyes, Sagamore. A Huron pays for this before the winds blow away the scent of blood. Look there, Uncas. As I'm a man of white blood, yonder lies a red skin without a hair of his head where nature is. Look to him. He may be one of your people. Uh, no, Delaware. Or neither. Leave him to Raven. Come along, then. <clears throat> what is it, Uncas? God sent it to be a tardy Frencher. No, the boy has found something there in the bushes. Look there. La Luca. Hola. Bring it here, Uncas. By the Lord. It's a piece of Cora's riding veil. Dark here. Pass here. Then she may have escaped, Hawkeye. Look for the trail. Softly, softly. A step too soon may give us trouble. If she's alone, she's gone in a circle, maybe within a dozen miles of it. If the Hurons have her, she's near the Canada. God forbid. What matter? If she is, the Mohicans and me are on one end of the trail, and we'll find her of a hundred leagues separated. <laughs> Gently, Uncas, don't forget that light feet leave pain marks. Do you see any tracks, lad? Marky, sir. Let me see. You're right, Mohican. What do you make of this telltale? There is no subtle, sly fox. I knew when I saw him at Montcalm yesterday that we'd meet his devil tree again. There'll never be an end to his lope until Kale Deer has a friendly word with him. Fingerhoop. Is Uncas right? Uncle's right. Magua moccasin. If you are right, we must take up the trail at one. Oh. It's not the swiftest leaping deer that gives the longest chase. But I shall not stop until she is found. I know, I know. Move on, Uncas, a little. Keep your eyes on the dried leaves. I'll watch the bushes. Move on. The sun's getting low. Is there nothing I can do? Yes, you can keep in the rear and don't cross the trail. Oh, have they found something else? Uh, the secret is out, Major. Look. Here's the track of that one-sided horse again. And the path pointed straight toward the tunnels. Holy man, every moment is precious. Keep cool, keep cool. We're not starting on a squirrel hunt. We'll have to outlive for nights and days and cross a wilderness where the feet of men seldom go before we finish. And all the more reason to push on. An Indian never starts on an expedition of this sort without smoking over his council fire. Well? We'll go back and light our fire in the ruins of that old fort. And in the morning, we'll take up our work like men and not like the boys. Leave the trail, Sergeant. Bring up it. <laughs> of my murdered friends hangs like a pall upon me. Let death cry still ring in my ears. And Cora, I... Oh, it's I... the life of the wilderness, though, friend. But we'll exact vengeance on the violets before the trail's done. Listen. I keep hearing noises off there on the plain. Is it possible the French haven't deserted the place? No. They're caged safe in Fort Tiber now. Some of Magua's tribe may be hanging around. I think you'd better tell the Indians to put out their fire. Listen, don't you hear the noise I mean? Uh, the Indian seldom lurks about the dead. When he gets a scalp, he's willing to leave his victim to his natural rest. There it is again. I, I hear it. Just some wolves, though. Uh, Major, do you opine that the heaven of a red skin and us whites will be one and the same? No doubt. Don't you? For my part, I believe that paradise is ordained for happiness. And that men will be indulged in it according to their gifts. I therefore judge... Shh. Wait. There is something beside the wolves moving out there. I feel sure of it. Uncas. The boy has Indian senses that are sharper than ours. Uncas. Uncas. Speak lower, man. We don't know what ears are out there. Uncas, here. There's something out there on the plain, boy. Listen. 
Montcalm may not have called us all his Indians. We'd better stand to our arms. Uncas! Why? He's gone. But where? Oh, our Indian cannon. The lad's, the lad's halfway to the plain already. Look at the old chief yonder by his fire. If there are skulkers out there, they'll never discover by his face that we suspect danger. But he shouldn't stay there in the light. He'll certainly be the first victim. True. But a single suspicious movement or look might bring on an attack before we're ready. He knows Uncas is out there on a scent. Don't worry. He knows what to do. I'll call him. You know this signal. Did he hear? He seems asleep. He's pretending. Notice the turn of his head, though. And the position of his tomahawk. He knows what's up. But he won't make a false move because... <clears throat> I knew he'd be a target in that light. They've got him, Holly. Hold. He's safe, all right. It was a bad shot. Wait. <clears throat> that was Uncas. How do you know? I know the crack of his rifle. I carried the piece myself once. Ah, oh, Sergeant, that was a close call for you then. You were on shoot. Sharp one, safe. But the main goes on us in earnest. One. Not many. Was he watching us? Come to scalp dead. Go boast to squab, red warrior. Kill many pale face. I thought as much. But the rascal certainly sent his lead close to your head, Sagamore. Oh, good, sir. What was it, boy? We heard your rifle. Yeah. Or neither. Mm. By the Lord. If the Oneidas are outlined on the trail, we shall be flanked by devils on every side. Are you sure, Uncas? See? Oneida scalp. Uh, that settles it. We've got the Oneidas on our trail, Major. And we've got to throw them off, or we'll never reach your gal with the hair on our head. Serpent, we have to change our plan. How? Oh. We'll drop down the hurricane a couple of miles in a canoe. Strike the woods and try to pick up the trail somewhere inland. You'll find trail that way. Yes, we can. Take many days. Maybe, but we know they're headed for the calendars, don't we? For us, big. No fine trail. Kanger Cook is right. We may never pick up Magua's tracks if we don't follow from here. And all the time, Cora is... Asians. Your miners. But you said there was only one of them, and his scalp is hanging there in Uncas' belt. He was alone in his deviltry, but his death cry was heard by his friends to pin on that. Put out the fire, Uncas. Find yourself a bed, Major, in some corner of these ruins. I'll call you a sun sunup. guide in the colonies, Hawkeye, but I don't agree that you're taking the right course now. Have you forgotten so soon the skulking reptile that stalked our camp a few hours ago? No, but dead men give no cause for fear. You shouldn't bend a foot from our true course with so slight a reason. Even Chingakook thinks you're making a mistake. If you'd fought these battles as long as I have, you'd know that every possible precaution is only poor protection at best. Ah, uh, forget your worries, Major, and look at the glories of nature. In your country, boast a lake like this. It's just a crooked channel studded with hundreds of little islands. Every one a possible ambush. This was the road Montcalm took for his retreat. How do you know but what he left some of his Iroquois to act as a rear guide? Possible, possible. That's why you see Chingakook watching every thicket we've passed the last hour. Mm -hmm. What is it, Sergeant? I don't see so much as the head of a loon dot in the water. Look. I see nothing but land and water. Ah, uh, Sagamore, there's always reason to what you say. It is only a shade, yet it's not natural. What is it? You see that mist rising above that first island just ahead on the right? It's a streak of fog. It's all around us. It's more like a streak of thin cloud. It's a vapor from the water. Uh, a child could tell that. But what is the edge of blacker smoke that hangs along its lower side? It's my judgment that it comes from a fire that's been suffered to burn low. Then push on for the place and relieve our doubts. The party must be small that can lie on such a tiny bit of land. You can't judge Indian cunning by the rules you read in books. There are just two things to do. 
One is to turn back and give up any attempt to follow the sly fox for the prison? Never. Very well. And we must make a push. And if the Indians or Frenchers are in the narrows, run the gauntlet through these toppling mountains. What say you, Chingatook? Go on. Look to your primer, Major. This may be a sharp tussle before we get through. We may be able to slip by them, unless they're on the lookout. If we can get to that narrow just ahead, we'll be able to throw them off if it comes to a race. Full speed, Chief. It's a camp, all right. I can see two canoes pulled up there in the bushes. The maze haven't got their eyes out of the mist. But we should hear their cursed hoop. Together, Sergeant, Uncas, we're leaving them behind. They discover this Hawkeye. Give me the other paddle. Keep your eye on the Major. How many of the varmints? Six, I think. They've pushed off. Bend to it, Mohegans. If we can hold this lead, there's nearly an Indian rifle that can hit at this distance. We're gaining every second. Good. Keep to the paddles, Chief. Hand me my rifle, Major. We'll see what Tildeer can do at this distance. You can't hit at that distance. Anyway, it's not their lives we want. Stay with your paddle. I want just one shot to teach him to keep their distance. Okay. What is it, Uncas? Ah, oh, boy, you saved a human life for that word. What is it? Look okay. at Ahead of us, Hawkeye. There is another canoe cutting straight across our course. Aye, so that's the game, eh? Set the bow to the west, Chinkakook. We can't make it, Hawkeye. Make for the rocks on the left and stand them off from there. I am strike an ambush, eh? A little more to the west, Sergeant. The knaves are sparing the man to the rifle. A single broken bone will lose our scalps. Edge more from the sun and put that island between us. to hear another episode of The Last of the Mohicans, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. During the massacre at Fort William Henry, Cora Monroe was captured by the Sly Fox, leader of the treacherous Iroquois. Hawkeye and the two Mohicans, Chingakook and Uncas, Spurred on by the frantic fear of young Major Hayward, have taken up the trail. Several days have passed, and as yet they have failed to find any trace of the sly fox and his war party. It is midday, and the two whites are resting at a small forest stream, waiting for the Mohicans who have gone into the woods alone to continue the search for some sign of the Huron. It's hopeless, Hawkeye. This trackless jungle would hide an army. I told you you'd lose the trail if you didn't follow it from the fort where we first picked it up. Patience, patience. That's what you've been saying for two days. I have been patient. It looks to me like you're just tramping around in a circle. You can dispense with my services if you wish, Major. Oh, forgive me, Hawkeye. I'm sorry. I owe you everything, even life itself. I'm distraught, that's all. Cora is all the world to me. To think of her in the hands of that ravaging savage drives me mad. Three days of fruitless searching. Days are nothing in a case of this kind. I've followed a blind scent for weeks. But I've always fetched my quarry. You must have some theory you're working on. Yes, I had one. When I found the home path of the Hurons ran north, I thought they'd follow the valleys and keep between the waters of the Hudson and the Horicon. Human nature is weak, and we may be on the wrong scent. Wouldn't it be wise to go back to the fort and try to pick up the trail from there? Uh, it would delay us a week. Yet if I... There comes Uncas, Hawkeye. So it is. Aye, the boy has news, too, or I'm a half-breed. How do you know? I know the gate. But Chingakook isn't with him. Could anything be wrong? No. He's probably camped somewhere along the trail. How is it, Uncas? Uh, uh, Uncas, fine here on trail. Dark hair, go toward frost. Heaven be praised. You sure there's no mistake? No, no wrong. Find Huron camp. Magua, make fire, hunt deer. How long ago was the camp made? Two, 
three days. And we've almost caught the varmints without knowing it. Where's your father, lad? Sharpen, wait at camp. Come. Follow, Uncas. It looks like we're in the enemy country, Major. Our trail may be over before another sun. Lead the way, Bounden Elk. We'll reconnoiter the place for ourselves. about these signs. How many warriors in Magma's party, Chinga Cook? Many. Have you found the path for which they left? You don't live by water. Walk in stream. No, I might have known it. No, but they'll follow the water not very far. They'll soon take to the trees again. How close are we getting to them? I scent we're drawn nigh, Major. There's the open sky through the treetops. We can't attack them openly. Certainly not. Sagamore, you take the hillside to the right. Uncas will bend along the brook to the left. The Major and I will follow the trail. You run close. Wait for night. Then go look. We're not that close, Chief. Anyway, the sun's almost down now. Don't run the risk of getting separated, Hawkeye. We'll need every rifle if we do have to fight the devil. If anything should happen, Sergeant... The call will be three croaks of a crow. I saw one of the birds fanning himself just beyond that oak. Crow, sign you're on near. Yeah, I know. I think Chia Cook's right. We ought to wait until it's dark before going on. Yes, but we have to get their exact location before we can plan a campaign. Very well. Do you think they may suspect we are so near? No. The considered varmint probably think they've thrown us off entirely. <laughs> the sly fox has a surprise waiting for him. I'm glad Cora's father fell with his troops. This new danger to his daughter would break his heart. Hold. Stop. As I'm alive, there aren't one of the miscreants ahead of us now. Where? Fifty rods to your right. An Iroquois? It's a curious dress for a Huron. I can't see his face. His head shaved, though. And he has three hawk's feathers in his warlock. I just need to investigate. No, the imp's not a Huron. He doesn't belong to any of the Canada tribes, as far as I can see. He is dressed, oddly. That calico shirt. Uh, the knave's been plundered in the white, you can see that. Uh, a murdering set of varmints Montcalm raked up. Can you see his rifle or his bow? What's he doing? He doesn't seem viciously inclined. I don't see any arms, no. But he has long legs that we can't trust. Parky, keep him under your rifle. I'll creep up and take him alive. Don't fire, though, unless... Wait, Hawkeye. He's not an Indian. It's David Garrett. David! David! Stop! Stop! The Philistines! The Philistines! They're just over the hill. Garrett! What are you doing here? Were you taken captive too? Aye. A captive to the heathen in a way. Yet not a captive. What the tarnation is the meaning of this, Major? Hawkeye, this is David Gamut, the old singing master we had with us at the fort. He's not right in his head, a little balmy about religion. Where are the Iroquois, David? Where's Cora? Is she with them? She's a captive to the Philistines. Greatly troubled in spirit, but safe enough in body. Who's her captor? Magua? I call him Beelzebub, because I know he's possessed of an evil spirit. I sung him every tune in the hymnal, and I couldn't touch his soul. Where's the knave now? Today he hunts the moose. Tomorrow he goes to Canada. The maid is in the camp behind yonder pinnacle of rock. Has she suffered, did she say? So far as praises and thanksgiving and psalmody can temper the spirit in the affliction, 
she has not suffered. But why are you permitted to go at large, unwatched? My songs have cast a spell over the heathen. Your profession of singing has saved your life, friend. The red men never harm one they think is not in his right mind. They think you're akin to the great spirit. Albert, why didn't you strike back on your trail and bring in your titans to Port Edward? My soul did long for the habitations of Christendom, but I chose to follow the tender spirit rather than leave her in captivity and sorrow. My friends, let us raise our voices in praise for this happy meeting. I will give you the note on my picture. Uh, not now, David, not now. Your songs may save your scalp, but we'll not be able to pass us half with it if your piping brings a horde of the devils down on us. Yeah, but your presence here, though, is a stroke of good luck. I have a plan, Major. We'll send this man to the lodges. He can give Cora word that we are near. We can signal him to come out if we want to consult again. Do you know the cry of a whippoorwill, friend? Aye, aye. It has a soft and melancholy note. But the time is rather unmeasured. Very well. When you hear the whippoorwill, call three times. Then you are to come into the bushes where the bird... No, I have a better plan, Hawkeye. I will accompany him. You? Are you tired of seeing the sun rise and set? David is a living proof that the Hurons can be merciful. Yes, but he can use his throat as no man in his true senses would provide the gift. But I, too, can play the fool in the matter. Ah, oh, it's suicide, you old... I'm friend. resolved. I know the risk, and I take the responsibility. Help me with the disguise. Paint me. Change me into anything. A fool. I know. I have a knowledge of French. I'll pass for a juggler from Ticonderoga straggling among the Allied tribes. What will you do when you get to the camp? I'll pretend to know the art of healing. I'll ask to wait on their sick. Yes. In that way, I'll find Cora and plan the best way to escape. All right. But listen to me. You mustn't try to get her away alone. You'll need me and the Mohicans. When you find a gal and make our presence known, come back here tomorrow night when the North Star shines above this big pine. You understand? But if I should be recognized and held prisoner, you will not desert Miss Monroe. A gal will be rescued if we have to burn every wigwam between here and Canada. Then call Chingakook and have him change me. David and I will go at once. the heathen, my friend. This is a case of life and death, David. You must be careful not to betray me. Remember now, I am just a wandering buffoon, a comic entertainer. You happen to meet me, understand? Aye. But how will you converse with them? You speak the language of the heathen? No, but I know some French. Some of their chiefs will surely be able to understand. What is that large shelter of bark and branches in the middle of the camp? Tis there the chiefs hold their councils. A sort of a tabernacle, so to speak. Though I can't say they know much about singing hymns. Enough of that. Listen to me. We walk slowly toward that house, go inside and sit quietly until somebody speaks to us. Let me do the talking. And don't show any surprise at anything I do. Are you ready? Aye. No act of mine will molest you. One thing more. Is Magua here in the village now? You mean the Beelzebub who brought us into the woods? Of course. He will be back tonight. Maybe tomorrow. Whence comes the discord? Has hell broke loose? Lie still. It's on the other side of the camp. Methinks the devils are practicing for another massacre. It's too dark to tell very much from here. Let's get closer. Something has happened to drive them crazy. Perhaps the one you call the sly fox has returned from the hunt. It's more than that. Sounds like a returning war party. We can tell in a moment, though. They are building up the fire. That's what it is, David. Look, coming down from the trees on the right. The camp's gone wild. Even the children. It is a war party. Aye! 
The Philistines have fetched another captive. He's thrust up like a fowl. Ah, but it's a red skin. Let the devils howl over their own kind. What difference? David, I... David, it's Uncas, the Mohican. After days of vain searching, Hawkeye and the Mohicans discover the trail of the Iroquois who hold Cora Monroe captive. Stealing cautiously to the Huron camp, they meet David Gamut, an itinerant singing master, whom the Indians evidently thought demented. David has followed the war party of Iroquois and now tells Hayward the enemy camp is near and that Cora is safe. Hawkeye immediately plans to use him as a decoy. But Hayward decides he will go to the camp also, disguised as a straying entertainer. The young officer and the singer start for the Indian encampment. The two adventurers are hiding in the outskirts of the camp when they hear the yells of a returning raiding party, dragging with them a captive. Hayward cries out, David, David, it's Uncas, the Mohican. This is awful, Gamut. We must get the boy away. I know a two map will haul their antics. Oh, don't be foolish. They mustn't notice us. Don't do anything that will attract their attention. Just wait. Can you understand this heathen language? No, but their actions tell us enough. <laughs> Why should they make so much rejoicing over a red man? Oh, don't you understand? It's Uncas the Mohican. He means more to them than a regiment of English soldiers. There's Beelzebub. Who? By the Lord. It's Magua, the sly fox. Oh, if Uncas lives an hour, it'll be a miracle. Listen. Delaware can sleep at night 
This gives us time, David. Watch where they take him and come back here with the news. But be careful, friend, and stay away from Magua. He is more clever than the rest. Aye. Our presence here is already perceived. Here comes one of the chiefs. Yes. Move away. Let me do the talking. Do none of my brothers speak French or English? I should be grieved to think that none of this wise and brave nation understood the language of the Grand Monarch. His heart would be heavy if he believed his red warriors paid him so little respect. Mm. When our great father speaks to his people, is it with tongue of Aaron? He knows no difference in his children, whether they be red or white. So chiefly he is satisfied with the brave Huron. In what manner will he speak when the runner counts to him the scalp which five nights ago grew on head of Yangis? They were his enemies, and he will say, It is good. My Hurons are very gallant. Our Canada father, do not think it. His ears are open to Delaware, who not our friend. Hmm. They fill him with lies. It cannot be. See, he has bid me, who am a man that knows the art of healing, to go to his children and ask if any are sick. Good. Mm. My Canada father do not forget his children. I thank him. An evil spirit lives in wife of one my young men. Mm. Can cunning stranger frighten him away? Spirits differ. Some yield to the power of wisdom, while others are too strong. My brother is great medicine. Mm. He will try. I shall be glad to help my red brother. Where is the sixth squaw? She is yonder in cave. Follow me. What is that? That bear? One of your tame animals? No animal. It is Great Bear, one of the wise medicine men. Has he tried to cure your sick woman? His skill has failed. My brother is Great Medicine Man. He will try. The squaw of my young man will get well. Is this the place? This is the door. Mm. Uh, Tell your medicine man, Great Bear, to let me go in alone. I do not need his help. Chief of Huron cannot command medicine men. Mm, very well. Yes. But I shall not need him. This is sick one. Mm. Oh, she is very ill. It will take a long time to cure her. But you can do? If the great spirit is willing. Mm. But I wish you'd drive this animal away. Peace, peace. Please be quiet. I go. Let my brother use all his magic. Keep away, you beast. Great medicine man. Hawkeye, you... The varlets are about the place. Any sounds not natural to witchcraft will bring them back. What's the meaning of this masquerade? I haven't the time to tell everything. After you left, I hid old Chingakook in a beaver lodge. And Uncas and I pushed on here. Have you seen the lad? He's a captive. Condemned to die at sunrise. And I was afraid so. That's why I'm here. Go on. But you runs may return any moment. After Uncas was taken... I come down close to the lodges to look around. And good luck led me to the spot where one of their famous conjurers was dressing himself for some of his mummery. I wrapped the imposter over the head and covered myself in this bare skin in order to hunt around with more freedom. You certainly take the part well. I admit you startled me at first. Have you found the gal? There hasn't been time. Gallat is searching for her now. What's that? Listen. Why is 
She's right here, man, in one of these adjoining caves. We've got to find her. You go alone. I will stay here. Will the Hurons return? No danger yet. They know a conjurer must take his time. If they do come, I'll play the figure. Go on now. Up over those rocks there. Cora. Cora. Where are you? Cora. Oh, don't. Cora. I, I knew you'd come. Oh. Don't be frightened, my dear. I'm disguised as a medicine man. The Indians don't know I'm here. Oh, there now, don't get away. Hawkeye is here too. Can you walk? I don't know. I've been tied for days. Now let me untie these cords. Where's Hawkeye? He's out there in the next cave. Oh, don't be frightened when you see him. He's wearing the skin of a bear like an old medicine faker. Uh, are the Mohicans here too? Chingakook is safe. But Uncas is a prisoner here in camp. We'll come back for him as soon as we get you away. But now, don't cry, darling. Oh! Duncan! Magua! come to camp. Do your worst. You and your vengeance are alike despised. Will Pale Face speak same words at stake? Yes, in the presence of your nation. Lorinard Subtil will see Pale Face laugh at torture. <laughs> what are you going to do? Haven't you tortured us enough? <laughs> Duncan! Oh, the, the bear! Stop it, great bear! Fool, they were children and squaw. Pale Face, come with Magua. <laughs> Stop it. Good. Take them ropes you took off the gal and tie his feet. That'll delay the plan of the varmint somewhat. Uh, how did the imp enter anyway? Not a soul passed my way since you left me. I can't say. There must be a secret door here somewhere. Bring the gal. Bring the gal with me. We'll make a push for the woods by the way we come in. Impossible. She's fainted, Hawkeye. Oh, Cora. Cora. Oh, it's no use. You go. Save yourself. Leave us to our fate. Take her in your arms. And bring her into the other cave. But there's no escape from here. Do as I say. Every trail has it in. <sighs> yes, sometimes at the torture stake. Come on. There's some Indian clothes in here somewhere. And there they are by the couch of the sick woman. It's impossible, Hawkeye. Wrap the girl in them. Cover her up. We'll make a break for it. Listen. It's the friends of this squaw waiting for me to call them in. We can't by let leave by this door. We've got to try. But they'll stop us. What shall we say? Tell them that we've shut the evil spirit in the cave and are taking the woman to the woods in order to find strength and roots. Practice all your cunning, Major, or we'll never see another sunrise. Last of the Mohicans, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. Corroy is held prisoner in the Iroquois camp, and Major Hayward and David Gamut have gone to effect her release. Just as they arrive, they hear the victorious yells of a war party who have captured Uncas. 
Hayward says he's a medicine man and is taken to a cave to practice his art on a sick woman of the tribe. He is followed into the cave by a large black bear, whom the chief says is one of his medicine men. Left alone in the cave with the sick woman and the bear, Hayward begins to mumble his incantations when the animal reveals itself as Hawkeye. Suddenly they hear the voice of a girl sobbing and recognize Cora, whom they discover in a neighboring cave. Hayward rushes to her and is planning an escape when interrupted by Magua, who creeps in by a secret door. At the same moment, the bear enters, and the two whites overpower the Indian and leave him bound and gagged. Hawkeye orders Hayward to wrap Cora in Indian clothes and carry her from the cave. But as they start, they hear the voices of the Indians who are waiting outside for the return of Hayward, whom they believe to be skilled in the art of healing. Come along. You must do the talking. If I speak, my tongue will give us away. I'll do my best. Push open the door. Have my brother drive away, evil spirit? What has he in on? It is your child, chief of the Hurons. The disease has gone out of her. It is shut up in the rocks. Where are you take her? Into the woods, where I will strengthen her against further attacks. She shall be in the wigwam of your young man when the sun comes again. Let me go in cave. I will fight evil spirit. But, uh, what, is my brother mad? He will meet the disease, and it will enter him. Let my children wait here, and if the spirit appears... Beat him down with clubs. Keep on the outside of the camp, Major. Some of the imps are still moving about. Where are you going? Not far. We'll join Jingakook at the Beaver Lodge. How did you dare hide him so close to the camp? The Hurons venerate the beaver. They never bother his lodgings. <laughs> Cora's awake, Hawkeye. Don't let her give an alarm. Be still, Cora. You're all right now. You're with your friends. We're taking you away, but don't cry out, dear. There's still danger. Oh, let me down, Duncan. I can walk now. You're too weak yet. Just be quiet. <laughs> Hawkeye. Yes, he's here. We'll be quite safe in a moment. Don't mm. worry. Magua. Magua. Is he following? He's tied up fast in the cave. We'll be far away before they find him. Here we are, Major. This is the Beaver Lodge where I left Chingakook. Wait. What's that? Did I startle you? It's Chingakook's signal. Where is he? Why doesn't he come out? Uh, there's some mystery here. Yeah, the old fellow has left. Oh, Duncan, let, let me stand, please. I, I'm better now. All right, my dear. But don't stop, Hawkeye. We must get as far away as possible before Meg A distant flight is impossible, gal. The Hurons would find our trail before we got a dozen miles. Ah, there's the chief now. I knew he'd keep the rendezvous. Over here. Where have you been, Sagamore? When Hawkeye leave Sarpen here in Beaver House, Sarpen go on trail over mountain four mile away. Find another camp. Another tribe of Iroquois? Then we must start for Fort Edward. Wait. Go on, Chingakook. Sarpen go close to camp. Watch. No Huron camp. Delaware camp. Many Delaware. Are you sure? Sharp and see tortoise on breast. Many Delaware warrior. The Delawares? Why, the Delawares are our friends, aren't they? You don't quite understand the matter rightly, Major. Years ago, the lion tongue of the white man turned brother against brother. And many of the Delawares took the trail with the Mingos, or Hurons. These Delawares may be friends, and they may be allies of the Sly Fox. But if Chingakook is a tortoise, he will surely have influence with them. I can't rightly tell that. 
sometimes happens that a friend whose face is turned from you bears a bloodier mind than the enemy who seeks your scalp. Sharp and go to Delaware camp. If Delaware friend, take dark hair to Delaware wigwam. Hide from your on eye. But if they are not our friends, Sharp and come back here to Beaver Lodge. Then go to White Man Fort. The plan's worth trying, Major. But you must start at once. Every moment is precious. Go. And Providence go with you. You are not leaving us? Yes. If Uncas is led to the stake, I will keep him company. Your courage outruns your judgment, friend. And the lad must be rescued. Of course, but... Listen to me, Major. Uncas and me have fought side by side winter and summer. Night and day we've roved the wilderness together, eaten of the same dish. One sleeping while the other watched. And if four of the Mohican boys shall perish for one of a friend, I'll go to the stake if need be. Magwar is sure to discover you. He won't lie tied in that cave very long. Uh, it is likely. Then I'm going with you. You'll only be in the way. Mm. Okay, right. Oh, there's one thing you can tell me, though. Do you know where the singer is sleeping? You mean David Gamut? Yes. I think he's in that wigwam just behind that big lean to where the chiefs hold their counsel. Good. He may be of use to me. Go now, for the devils discover the trick we've played on them. to excel this. There isn't time to explain now. Where's the young man come to fetch the maiden from the Philistines? They're both free of the violence for the time. Well, what are you doing here, then? Can you put me on the scent of Uncas, the Mohican? The young man who is held in bondage? Ah, yes. Poor soul. I greatly mourn for him in goodly him. Can you take me to him? Aye. It won't be difficult to take you there. He's confined right here in the center of the Philistines. But your presence may increase his unhappy fortune. There's not so much risk. Most of the Mingos are asleep. Have you had talk with the Delaware? Aye. One of his guards speaks a little English. And I've been trying to convert the heathen. Good. Now listen carefully, Gamut. Pay attention to every word. We must rescue the boy, and I have a plan already made. We will go together. I will continue to play the part of a medicine man. When we get close to the weak ones... Okay. 
his bands, Gamut. While I take off this skin. Here, August. Take this knife. The red devils are outside. Are you ready? August, ready. We go. Where? To Tartus. The children of my grandfather. Aye, but what shall we do with these mingos? They count six. And this singer is no fighting man. You're a not boaster. That totem this moose. They run like snail. You might outrun them, lad. But the knaves will prove too much for me. You'd better take the leap yourself. I'll put the bear skin on again and trust to Cunnan for want of speed. Oh, Uncle, stay. What for? To die with friend of Delaware. No, it won't do. You make a run for it. The Mingos will chase you first, and that'll give me time enough. Oh, Uncle, no go. Stay with Hawkeye. And we'll try something else. Here, you put this bear skin on. Damn it. Change clothes with me. Here, take my hunting shirt and cap. Give me your blanket and hat. That's right. Now give me your book and spectacles. And that tootin' horn. I hate to part with my pitch pipe. I'll give it back if we meet in better times. Are you going to practice on the heathens? We're going to change places, friend. But don't be afraid. It's no great risk. Your danger will be when the savages find they've been deceived. But you'll be on halfway to me to save you. Here. Sit down here in the shadow and take the part of Uncas. Hold your head down and keep still as long as you can. And when you do speak, break out into one of your songs. That'll remind the Indian you're not as responsible as men should be. The Lord's will be done. I do not fear the Philistines. Will you try to sing to them? I'm not practicing your art, but I'll do my best. Goodbye, friend. Come, Uncas. We'll see if we can pass the barbets. So, is there a word dog afraid? Will your arms hear his groan? We'll be in the woods in a moment, August. Here, leave the bear skin. The rifles are just ahead. We go to Tortoise. Where we'll find the Major, Chingakook, and the Dark Hair, if all's well. <laughs> You're a no office call. No. Highly discovered it, boy. <laughs> Run for it. Here we are. Here. Take your rifle, son. Let the devil strike our scent. Two of them at least come to their sudden death. good fortune seems to be leading our friends at last. Cora has been rescued from the clutches of the sly fox and has gone with Chingakook to seek refuge with the neighboring tribe of Delawares. Hawkeye has also cleverly tricked the Hurons and stolen Uncas from under their very eyes. The Iroquois, of course, soon discover the deceptions practiced upon them and are infuriated to learn that their enemies are in the Delaware camp. The present episode opens two days later in the lodges of the Delawares. It is late afternoon. Hawkeye and Major Hayward, sitting apart from the Indians, gathered around the evening campfires, are discussing their situation. I can't understand this at all. This is a Delaware tribe, and yet we are virtually prisoners. Let me tell you a little history, Major. At one time, the Delawares were a powerful tribe and at peace with the whites. But the lion paleface broke his treaties and pushed the Delawares back from the lakes. And then the tribe was broken up. Some joined the French, and brother took up the hatchet against brother. Uncas and his father left the tribe to live for themselves. And the act brought down the hatred of many Delawares. Well, I still don't understand. You were taken in, weren't you, and given lodging. But last night when Uncas and I come, I was given shelter, but what happened to Uncas? He was seized as a renegade who had deserted his people, and he's now a prisoner. It's all a queer business to me. 
What can we do for the boy? Uh, time will tell. Then there's another thing. You have referred to him a dozen times as the last of the Mohicans. What does that mean? Mohicans and Delawares are the same, as I understand it. And there's hundreds of them here in this one camp. Well, that's easy answered. Uncas is the last descendant of the Tortoises. Who are they? The highest blood of all the Mohicans. Well, if these Indians are Tortoises, and if Uncas is a Tortoise, why doesn't he explain the fact to them? I admit I can't answer that. I haven't seen the lad since they put him in that teepee. But he has his own reason, I'll wager. Do you think Cora is safe here? Where is she? She's in one of the wigwams, asleep. She was completely exhausted. I'll find she's safe enough. Darson <laughs> mischief a foot, Major. The camp has visitors. By the Lord, it's Magua. What can he be doing here? Uh, he's come for his late captives. But the Delawares won't give us up, surely. That's for Providence to tell. The sly fox will tell a clever story, depend on that. Is there anything we can do? Not a thing. Listen. Yes! Very Supreme Chief of Huron, come to visit Delaware Brothers. The white Huron is welcome. Mm. He come to eat succotash with brothers of the lakes. Let's move down closer. He may see us. No matter. He knows we're here. Do my young men leave the Delaware's room on the mountain for the hut? The Delawares are rulers of these hills. It is well. Why should the red men sharpen their knives against each other? Mm -hmm. Good. There are strange moccasins in the woods. Have my brothers seen the feet of white men? Let my Canada father come. His Delaware children are ready to see him. When Canada father come, good. But my young men have seen the trail of young geese. Near the village of the Delaware. I will not find them asleep. What does he mean by that? Wait, wait. Patience. It is well. The Lord Sutil brings gifts to his brothers. See. The sly fox. My brother, welcome. Mm. The Hurons love their friends, the Delawares. It is good. All red men are colored by same sun. I'm going to stop his lies, Hawkeye. The time ain't come. A wrong move will be fatal. Has not my brother scented spies in the woods? Strange moccasins have been tracked to our lodges. Did my Delaware brother beat out the dog? No. The stranger is always welcome. Stranger, yes. But not the spy. What will my Delaware brother say when Magua tells him that a bloody Yengi smokes at his fire? Uh, the Yengi who has killed many of his young men. Who is Yengi who has killed my warriors? Long, long, Karin! Hawkeye! Ah, oh, the lion vomit! If I had my rifle, I... What does my brother mean? The Huron never lies! Let the Delawares count their prisoners! They will find one whose skin is neither red nor pale! What are they going to do? Ah, uh, the chief is calling his counsel. They'll pull us out in a moment for a hearing. Let's try to slip away. I'll get caught. Oh, it's too late. Then I will speak. Chief of the Delawares, I am the Long Caribbean. Mm. What brought white men into camp of Delawares? I come for food, shelter, and friends. Stop. My brother speaks to shield a friend. Chief Tamanon. I am the one the Hurons call the Long Rifle. No, it is not so. Cannon will hear chief of the Hurons. Which is the Long Calvin? Mm, that the Long Calvin? He lies. Will a wise Delaware believe the barking of a wolf? That the Long Calvin? Tell him to believe the Renouche 
the teal tell truth. Ah, your idea was foolhardy, friend. Come in, Lung. My brother is wise. Hmm. Now let great chief give justice to his Huron neighbor. What does my brother ask? Did pale face woman come to Delaware camp? She is here. Pale face woman belonged to Magua. Magua come for his own. Wait. This Iroquois fills your ears with lies. He has no claim on us. He stole the white girl from her people. We followed him and took her away. We came here for protection, for shelter. All we ask is freedom to go back to our own people. That Tamanan called the young Mohican. Let Uncle speak. He will tell the truth about your red brother. The Mohican snake. A red skin in the play of Ganges. What are you going to do with him? We keep him for torture. I say let him come before you. He will blow the clouds from your eyes. <laughs> let him come. Now is the test, Major. Keep your eye on Magua, Hawkeye. The devil is up to some mischief. He's not armed. He can't do anything now. Bring the Mohican traitor here. Will they believe the boy? Aye, they may. Anyway, our fate will be decided in a moment. Help us here. With what tongue does prisoner speak to the Manitou? Like his father, with tongue of Delaware. Why does the Delaware creep like a poison snake into the camp of his nation? August come to village of his father. You are not worthy of your name. You are a hound that howls when the Yankees show him a trail. And you are dogs that howl when the Frenchman casts you up as of his deer. Be still, my children. Delaware, you deserted your people. Terminand condemned you to the torture of fire. Can't we do something to stop these savages? Maybe we can bribe them. May the Lord be merciful. What can fire of Delaware do to make me burn the child of my fathers? My blood would smother your flames. My race is the grandfather of nations. Uh, who are you? Uncas. The son of Chingakuk, the son of the great tortoise. Look at my breast. Look at the rising sun. You are Uncas? I am Uncas, panther of his tribe, or the son of wiser Sagamore of Mohegan. If this be true, the Manitou is good. Come closer. The Terminan sea mark on your breast. It is true. It is true, my children. Our wise men have often said the two warriors of the unchanged race were in the hills of the Yangis. Why have their seats at the council fires of the Delawares been so long empty? When the Delawares were driven back from Great Salt Lake, we stayed by the streams we love. We did not follow to die in strange land. We keep our eyes on rising, not setting sun. Where is the Huron chief? He has stopped my ear. Mugwa his captives. Uncas, my son, has the Huron any claim? He has none. The long carabine laughs at the mingo. Go ask your squaws the color of a bear. A white woman, she is mine. Mohican, you know she is mine. Let Uncas speak. Tell the Huron dog to go back in his own wigwam. Uncas has spoken. The Delawares are crows, rabbits, deers. Let them hide in tentacles. over, Major. That's the last of the varmint for the present. But he won't lose any time planning his revenge. I'm going to call her. She'll want to know everything that has happened. Aye. 
Tomorrow we can start back to Fort Edward. Father. I'm here, boy. Father, look at this pale face. He is just man, friend of Delaware. Is he a son of the Minquon? Not so. He is warrior known to Yankees and feared by Mekwas. What name has he gained by his deed? We call him Hawkeye. His sight never fail. This rifle has sent many Mingo to happy hunting ground. Oh, alone, Calvin. My son has not done well to call him friend. I call him friend who prove himself so. If Uncas is welcome among Delaware, then Hawkeye is with his friend. The pale face has killed my young men. No, no. My rifle has slain the Mekwa. But my hand has never harmed the Delaware. He speaks truth, my father. If Chingakook could speak... Oh, Harry! Oh, Harry! Cora! Cora is not... What is it, man? Cora's not here, Hawkeye. She's gone. Not here? No, the wigwam is empty. I've searched the whole camp for her. She's gone, I tell you. She's gone. <laughs> to hear the final episode of The Last of the Mohicans, dramatized and directed by Charles Frederick Lindsley. Hawkeye, Major Hayward, and Cora Monroe flee to the camp of the Delawares for protection. Magua, the Iroquois chief, follows them and demands his former prisoners. But Uncas appears is recognized as the long-lost Mohican and proclaimed the Delaware leader. Uncas says he will not give up the white prisoners, and Magua departs in great wrath. A few moments later, Major Hayward rushes forward with the information that Cora has disappeared. While Magua was parleying with the Delawares, some of his warriors stole the girl and fled with her to the Iroquois camp. The present scene opens the next morning. Under the leadership of Uncas and Hawkeye, the entire Delaware tribe is creeping through the forest to attack their enemy. The leaders have halted for a council. Do we outnumber them, Hawkeye? My judgment is that we're about even. Then we can't attack them openly in daylight. Vengeance is the law of the woods, Major. We can't hold Uncas in check another hour. But our object is to rescue Cora. A main attack will peril her life. I think we should try some new plan to steal her away. There's no strategy that would fool the vomits a second time. There's another thing on my mind, friend. What's that? It's that poor singer, David Gamut. What do you think happened to him? I confess my conscience has troubled me on the point, too. But if he played his part well, I'll find he wasn't harmed. Anyway, time will tell. Our problem now is how to surround the Mingos and cut off every retreat. They can go north. The cliff's Cut off that escape. Uncas, my plan is to divide your braves into three parties. Give me 20 rifles and I'll move in from the south. You go in by the east side and send Chingakook with another party from the other direction. That bingo warrior come. Look, Hawkeye, there's one of the rascals heading this way. Don't fire, Uncas. Let's see what he's up to. He's not armed. Maybe it's a messenger coming to parley. Why close? He can't see us in this thicket. No, oh, talk with Mingo. Scalp. Wait till he gets close and take him alive. He may give us information. Tarnation, Major. It's your friend, the singer. He's made his escape. This way, Gamut. Run for your lives. Run for your lives. The heathen are abroad. Where are the Hurons in their camp? They lie hid in the woods between this spot and their village. They are coming this way. Did you see Magwell? Aye, Beelzebub. He's like a raging wolf. Were you in the camp last night when he returned? I was there. He brought the white girl with him. Why did she come back to the camp of the Philistines? She was kidnapped. The sly fox stole her from under our very eyes. Give me my twenty rifles, uncles. And I'll move down the stream. 
You drive in their front, and we'll take them between a crossfire. Is there going to be much shooting? We're going into a desperate and bloody battle, friend. Well, I'm not a man of war, but I would gladly strike a blow in behalf of the lady. You don't know the use of firearms? No. You, you carry no rifle? No, but I have this sling. See? And I remember the lad that overthrew the mighty Goliath. All right. You can follow, Singer. We may find some use for you in the Shoutons. I thank you, friend. If you'd sent me away, my spirit would have been sorely grieved. Remember, though, we've come to fight. Not to sing hymns. Until the general hoop is given, nothing speaks but the rifle. Magua is planning an attack on the Delaware camp, as David said. Why haven't we met him? The Mingo village is in the valley just beyond that thicket. His scouts may have discovered our advance, and he may have retreated to some ambush. Oh, if only someone would make a move. This waiting drives me frantic. Patience, patience. You're not leading a charge of British bayonets now. I wish I had half my regiment. I'd make the devils yell for quarter. Let's push on and take a chance. We'll have to wait for Uncas and Chingakook to get into position first. Why, there he is now. The battle's begun. But that's from the Mingo camp. Watch your cover, Delawares, and make for the thicket. I am Chris Chingakook. We fell on both sides and in front. Hawkeye, I know their plan. They're going to use that massive rock. See you safe in Port Edward. I'll guide you back whenever you're ready to start. Cora may want to rest here in the Delaware camp for a few days. Oh, no. I know we're welcome. But let's go tomorrow, please. The awful tragedies of this place will haunt me forever. Do you plan to remain in the colonies? I indeed not. This wilderness is home to you. But we could not find happiness here. We? <laughs> You're not speaking for the Major. Yes, Hawkeye. 
I'm returning to England with Cora. My military career has been frustrated and... and well, anyway. <laughs> you needn't try to explain to me, Major. I've known how this affair would terminate for a long time. The ceremonies of Uncas and Burial are about to begin. Let's move down a little closer. Yes. You may never see such a service again. <laughs> Don't cry, dear. Oh, Duncan. It was for me. He gave me his life. And there's no way to repay. The Mingos have paid, Cora. Not a dozen of them escaped. Magua. Ah, uh, this rifle answered for him. The sly fox got his deserts. What are they doing now? They're preparing the boy for his journey. The squaws are bringing their gifts of wampum and bracelets and other ornaments. I confess that this ceremony makes me think they have some sense of religion. Every man has his religion, Major. And it shouldn't be for a white man to mock at a redskin just because his ways are different. Look at Tingle. What's he going to do? It's the custom of the tribe to send a chieftain to the happy hunting ground with something of an oration. Listen. Thank you. 
It will be the aim of my life to erase these memories from your mind, Cora. I can't forget that a bad judgment of mine was probably the cause of everything. This is the last time, dearest, you must ever censure yourself. No, time is a kind friend. He'll make us forget. Time, yes. And happiness with you, my darling. This is Chesterton Radio, the true, good, and beautiful at ChestertonRadio.com.